First up is what you see, design. This phone is gorgeous and colorful. Two things LG is not normally known for, although I was actually a fan of their subtle framework. Gotta say, this works and it stands out. With an array of colors like Aurora Green, White, Silver, Gray, New Black, and the one we wound up with, Illusion Sunset, with this orange, yellow, and pink alternative, uh, takes the stage and all these different rays of light shine upon this nearly seven inch phone. The chassis is painted with this orange and pink hue, so it blends in well. The back of the phone pointed towards you, you notice the most interesting lines of lenses. They're separated, but not in that one chunk square protruding from the frame like most phones today. Well, almost. The main camera bumps out while the wide angle lens and the depth sensor are flush with the backing. It looks simple yet elegant. It's refreshing. Flip the phone to the front and you're welcomed to a 6.8 inch 1080p display with a little notch popping from the top border. Uh, would be nice with a hole punch in the top center, but this still looks good. Well, no notch and no hole punch would be best, but still looks good. The curves on the back are similar to the front, which makes the phone pleasing to hold. It's similar to the Galaxy line. Glass on glass gives this so-called mid-ranger wireless charging. The headphone jack makes a return as usual on the bottom left, with the USB-C charging port in the middle with the speaker grill to the right. A familiar setup. Right side of the phone has your power button. Up top, SIM tray with expandable storage up to 2 terabytes, And on top, 128 gigs that comes with the Velvet. You really can't go wrong here. To the left is your volume rockers and the useful or useless depending on well if you use the Google Assistant. Wishing it was remappable but it is a nice touch for those of us who don't always want to touch our phones. All this is fueled by a Snapdragon 765 processor that supports 5G. Moving on to the cameras and it seems that the hardware of the cameras are good. They're responsive, quick to take pictures. The quality seems to be mediocre though, but this seems to be more of a software issue. At first glance, the, so the shots appear clear, although a little bland. It's when you start to crop in that you notice this over sharpening light halo effects and quite a bit of noise for today's mobile phone tech. The odd thing here is that when you are using the filters though, for example, portrait mode, the quality of someone's face seems far less grainy, which help us believe that this was an issue with the camera quality while you're normally taking a shot to begin with. Basically, in some modes, you notice the noise and in others, you don't. Honestly, we're really hoping LG takes into consideration of all the subpar camera reviews or quickly comes out with an update to, to resolve this issue. After all, the phone's first ever public appearance was based mainly on the attractive exterior visuals of the water drop cameras themselves. In bright daylight though, the pictures do look good, although still a little over sharpened. The main 48 megapixel sensor puts out a decent 12 megapixel result. Uh, the 8 megapixel lens leaves a bit to be desired, but the colors are accurate. It's the lack of detail that's more noticeable. There is less detail compared to last year's LG G8 for anyone who is comparing. Back to the portrait mode, we actually found this to be very good with strong line detections and very cool blur effects. There is options LG gives you and that's always appreciated, especially for content creators, like literally from 3D effects to monochrome background, it really does have an array of features. On the video side, things get a bit interesting. For those of us who like shooting at 60 frames per second in 1080p mode, uh, holds up surprisingly well with smooth transitions and little jitters, especially for something that doesn't have optical image stabilization. For whatever reason though, at 1080p 60 frames per second also takes a little while to focus on smaller subjects while moving closer to them. Uh, there is no 60 frames per second in 4K, but this is probably the Snapdragon 765, not forcing itself to meet the demand. 1080p or 4K at 30 frames per second, video results are pretty good as well. Steady mode, a feature LG uses to, well, keep video steady, holds true where video has less jump effect. 
uh, more so moving up and down than side to side in our testing, especially while running. The odd thing is once in a dim or even door setting, the noisy grain shows up, but only in steady mode. Turn it off and the picture looks more natural again. Even switch to 1080p 60 frames per second in certain lighting conditions uh, has this color cast effect that's not really present when in 30 frames per second. It's odd and it's unlike LG to have this result. Again, not so much of an issue on the G8. Really hoping it is a software thing that LG can fix. Keep the options rolling with Bokeh Voice and ASMR mode while recording and you can definitely have some fun. Why? Because they actually work. What's appreciated is there is they're right there for easy access on screen so you won't forget about them. It's really cool to zone in on a particular person whispering and muffle out the surrounding noise. One big thing that's missing here is the manual video mode for those who really like to get complex with their video content. It doesn't go unnoticed, but if you don't use it all that often, my guess is you can cope with the loss. After all, this is LG's way of cost cutting in order to make their product more affordable and uh, hopefully gain some market share. There is a night mode and it does help out a little, but it's nowhere near as significant as the Pixel or Huawei series. The screen is beautiful. The colors are beautiful. The image is beautiful and the brightness is bright enough. And yes, only 60 Hertz refresher rates, no 90, no 120, no big deal unless you're one of those people who needs to scroll through menus with additional smoothness for whatever reason. Honestly, it is what it is. It's a 6.8 inches of Gorilla Glass 5 on both sides and it is tall. The curves on the screen and on the back allow this phone to not feel so big and it's relatively thin and light but not cheap feeling this phone feels flagship even if you consider it mid-tier as for the dual screen well lg may not be giving canadians or australians the luxury of using one probably some other countries too if you're looking for coverage on that you can check out mr mobile's video do dual screen phones <laughs> make sense with an extensive overview of the Velvet's dual screen case or Joshua Vergara's dual screen case tape. And you can't forget some gadget guy who thoroughly pumps content regarding LG and always has something on the Velvet. But when it comes to sound, LG has this down pat. Dual firing speakers, one at the bottom right of the frame and the other one coming out of the top front of the phone's earpiece. This phone's extremely well balanced and can get very loud. May not have as much kick with bass, but the clarity and tone are definitely on point. You don't need a mini speaker, this gets the job done. Yes, the lovable headphone jack has always kept traction with LG and we think it's a good move that they kept it in the Velvet. There is no quad DAC, um, which came to a bit of a shock. However, LG's incorporated something called, wait for it, LG sound, LG 3D sound engine. And to our surprise, it makes a big difference. When you have a decent set of headphones on, the quality sounds extremely clean and it comes out fairly loud as well. All in all, we really can't complain. If you notice a difference, let us know. We could continue to ramble on and on about specs, but we won't. Trying to keep the video to a decent length without making your head spin? Check out GSM Arena's website for all the full specs you're into. In conclusion, the phone feels and reacts premium. With a beautiful display, loud and clear sound, this is a joy to watch movies on or listen to music to. The design of the phone was well thought out, not too overwhelming feeling in the hand uh, because of the curvature. There's plenty of power. The 765 Snapdragon holds its own. There's no hiccups or stutters with the velvet we used. The one drawback is the biggest deal for a lot of people though. The cameras, they're okay. Just the noise level is strong. Night mode does help out a little and the wide angle lens is barely on par with what we're used to from a company that basically pioneered it. However, If LG can push a software update for the cameras, this could significantly change things. Remember, for $599 US and on average retail price of $750 with Bell in Canada, actually we've seen it as low as $600 Canadian with Freedom Mobile. 
the Velvet's got a lot going for it. With wireless charging, IP68 water and dust rating, expandable storage, a good size 4300 milliamp battery, good construction of material with a metal frame and the glass front and on back, the great sound and a distinct look because of its design and the color palettes that come with it. Again, it could be a home run if the cameras had as much detail as the design of the cameras themselves. All in all, a good all-round phone that offers some unique features that other phones in this tier don't. It's worth a look and we think it's worth the value. It's definitely there. Anyways, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, please like and subscribe if you like what you see. Cheers.